how would you define the term flip classroom? Well, I'm not sure it's important that how I would define it. It's really how it should be defined. So a consortium of, of ed experts got together maybe about two years ago. Uh, the Academy of Active Learning Arts and Sciences got together 100 people in 49 countries. I did chair the committee along with a professor from Harvard, a professor from Stanford, um, Raul Santiago from um, Universidad de la Rioja from Spain, a uh, professor in Taiwan, professor in Turkey, you know, a bunch of people. And there were 100 people, and we came up with a shared definition. Uh, and these were people who've been in the flip learning world for a very, very long time. And uh, and I would encourage you to look at that that uh, definition. I mean, it's it's it starts out with a purpose statement. I'm not sure I could quote it directly, but it says, you know, the purpose of flip learning is to reach every student. And what it does is it 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 turns upside down, if you will. The you know you you deliver the direct instruction ahead of time, sometimes through text, sometimes through video, so that the classroom can become an active space for learning. Okay. What, what do you think is the main characteristics of flip classroom today? Well, the big idea is that you do the easy stuff, have the students do the easy stuff when they're working alone in the independent space. Uh, and then the group space is used for active learning. Um, Sometimes that looks like a teacher walking around helping students on difficult assignments, problems. I teach physics and chemistry. My students struggle a lot with the content, so I'm walking around helping my students. Um, sometimes it's like in a in a, a a literature class. It's a Socratic dialogue about a piece of literature. Um, in a health or physical education class, they might actually be, you know, moving their body more, doing you know exercises or games. In a uh, world language class, they would be practicing speaking the target language. Uh, it depends. So the key is you have something active and what, what you do actively in your class, a lot depends on the content of what you teach. But the key idea is that you, is the easy stuff, the lower levels of blooms, if you will, the knowledge and understanding are done in the independent space and in the group space, that's where you, uh, you do active learning. Now the group space can also be in a Zoom room, right? If you've got a syn synchronous uh, online class, I've, I've talked with lots and lots of teachers who are online teachers. That's what they do. That's their job and they flip their classes as well. Another thing I would add that I'm seeing as an interesting piece of evolution is there's now new ways to make the independent space social. One of the problems about when a student's working alone is they're working alone. And there's now developing some software tools that allow, you know, let's say watching a flip video or reading assignment to make that a social experiment. The tool that I've been using this year to great success is called Perusal. Uh, developed by a Harvard professor, in fact, the, our Eric Mazur, who also is really his own right flip learning pioneer in higher education. And he developed a software tool that makes the independent space work social. So if a student is reading some text or watching a video, and then they're making comments and seeing each other's comments and commenting to each other. So it allows for a dialogue to happen outside of the class asynchronously for students to interact with each other, even though they're not in the same space.